Hey, how's everybody doing? Awesome. Uh, you all bow your heads with me and pray, please. <clears throat> Lord, I just ask your spirit fall upon this place, Lord, and that you convict the people's hearts of their sin, Lord, and, and convict any of us that are saved, Lord, if there's any sin within us. Yes, that you bring that to the forefront, Lord, because we thank you and we praise you for your saving grace, and we thank you and praise you for your Son who died upon the cross for our sin. Amen. And we love you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. On June 7, 1776, in session in the Pennsylvania State House, later Independence Hall, the Continental Congress heard Richard Henry Lee of Virginia read his resolution beginning, Resolved that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. On July 1st, 1776, Congress reconvened. The following day, the re resolution for independence was adopted by 12 of the 13 colonies. New York not voting. Immediately afterward, the Congress began to consider the Declaration. John Adams and Benjamin Franklin had made only a few changes before the committee submitted the document. The discussions in Congress resulted in some alterations and deletions, but the basic document remained Jefferson's. The process of revision continued through all of July 3rd and late into the morning of July 4th. Then at last, church bells rang out over Philadelphia. The Declaration had been officially adopted. America was headed towards freedom. It has been 235 years since the Declaration of Independence was signed, and America is seemingly as free as ever. We have personal independence. We have personal everything. Phones, computers, video games. You name it, but are we truly free? Our flesh may be free, but where does your soul find itself today? Are you free from bondage? The Bible says those who sin are a slave to sin. Are you a slave to sin? Unable to break free from fornication? Free from adultery? Free from homosexuality? Free from jealousy? Free from rage? Free from drunkenness? You cannot be free when you're chained up and bound tight by sin. You have transgressed God's law. God uses his laws to judge those outside of Jesus Christ. Those who perish as slaves to sin will be judged by these laws. These laws have been taken out of schools, out of courthouses, and out of the American conscience. These laws are God's Ten Commandments. How will you fare if you were to die today and God judged you by his holy commandments? Would you be innocent? No. Or would you be guilty? The Bible says if you have broken one of these commandments, you are guilty of breaking them all. Have you ever told a lie? Yes. The Bible says you're a liar. Have you ever looked at someone with lust in your heart? The Bible calls that adultery. Have you ever used God's holy name in vain? Mm. The Bible calls that blasphemy. All you have to do is break one of these Ten Commandments. As I said, and you're guilty of breaking them all. But I did not come here to condemn everyone to hell. I do not come with a turn or burn message. I come to bring hope. 2,000 years ago, a man came to earth that was perfect. He was God's unblemished lamb. The debt for sin would never be able to be paid by you or by me. God requires a blood sacrifice to pay for sin. And God got that blood upon the cross at Calvary's hill from the body of Jesus Christ. Put your trust in his blood today. 
Repent of your sin. Repent and turn to Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the light. No one will come to the Father except through Him. You must be washed in the blood of Christ. You must have your sins paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ in order to be free. In order to be free, you have to repent and turn to Christ. Go to the foot of the blood-stained cross and repent of your sin. Let Jesus give you a heart transplant. He will cut out your wicked heart of stone, a heart that loves sin, and replace it with a heart of flesh. A living, breathing, loving heart. A heart that beats for Him. A heart that loves God and loves your neighbor. I ask you tonight, what is stopping you from coming to the cross? What is holding you back from being free from sin and death? Why not right now put your trust in Jesus Christ? Repent of your sin and allow God to transform you. Please think about what I've said here tonight and don't hesitate, for we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Lord, I just ask that this message that's been delivered here tonight to penetrate the hearts, Lord, that you get into their hearts and begin to transform these hearts of stone, these wicked, depraved hearts, Lord, into hearts of flesh, hearts that are loving for each other, loving for their neighbors, Lord, a heart that will turn its back on sin and walk righteous with you. And I thank you and I praise you for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.